Welcome to Space Chase, a Spelljammers campaign. This is an arcane punk meets high fantasy story as a group of misfits attempt to navigate the stars as well as dimensions, all while things in the greater D&D multiverse are coming down on their heads. We previously left our little band during their first day of the Spelljammers Academy, a place to train those who wish to sail the stars, and it was not the greatest of days. After being introduced to each other and spending the day being tested, our little group currently known as Squad 6 was given the duty of delivering a box to the Academy's head. After delivering and opening a box, they discovered it was full of dangerous and carnivorous little creatures. After a brutal fight that landed all of them at death's door, they won the day, but something is happening at this Spelljammers Academy, and that something isn't over yet. It is the next day. You guys spent some time in the infirmary last night, got healed up, but now it's early morning. It's the very first day of true academy training. You guys get up, you head to the mess hall for some food, and you are hearing, of course, some talk as you're going. Everyone roll a perception check for me, actually. Let's have some fun. I'm in a hallway, maybe. <laughs> I rolled a three. I hear everything. I got a 20. 22. So, Agamus, you're dealing with the fact that you got bitten by a bunch of eel spider things. And then I ate one. And then you ate one. And the fact that you're going to a place where they cook their food. But Val and Pina, you hear a lot of stuff being talked about. One of the things you hear is a very interesting thing. It turns out last night, at some point, there was thefts and vandalism on the docks. But something else happened. There's rumors that someone tried to kill Mert. No one really knows what's going on, but evidently this has been happening a lot. Like things have been vandalized a lot. Things have been stolen a lot and they don't know who. So all of you are waiting in line. Well, quick question. Val, are you waiting in line? You don't actually have a stomach. No. <laughs> Yeah, I was about to say, Val does not actually require food or air or very much anything. So, Pina and Agamus, you are- supervision. Yeah, adult supervision is basically the only That's thing. A, we'll Val keep requires. her in line with us just in case. Oh, okay. So as you get up to the front, there is a huge creature serving the food. It is a gif. It is a seven-foot-tall hippo person. And this, of course, is Petty Officer Winston Ryback. And he is serving something very weird looking. It is kind of gray and thick. And you heard someone call it gunpowder chowder. Though you're not really sure what it is, but you can smell it. It is spicy. And he serves it in both vegetarian and meat dishes. So you guys can pick up your food and get whichever one you want and head out to a table. But as you enter the galley, it's pretty full. All the squads are basically sitting with themselves. There's only enough tables for each squad. But you notice that one of the tables is only partially empty. There is a human with disheveled black hair just kind of buried in a book. And he's the only one sitting at that table. And at that point, he looks up to kind of stretch his neck because he's been hunched over for a while. He's not eating anything. And all of a sudden he sees you guys and realizes he's sitting at the only empty table. And he kind of just motions for you guys to join him. And you guys have seen him before. You realize he was near you in squad formations. He's part of squad five. And as you guys get closer, he's like, uh, sorry for taking your table. I, um, I just kind of wanted some quiet while I was, uh, reading, um, this, um, I, uh, sorry, I, I can, I can stammer sometimes. What are you reading? Oh, it, it's just, uh, it's a book about alchemy. Uh, you know, just, but, 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 but before I, uh, before I joined, I was actually thinking about becoming an alchemist to, you know, um, start a business. He, cl he quickly closes. He's like, it, it, it's, um, it's kind of boring, but, uh, I, I'm pretty good at it. Does that book have the formulae for gunpowder or explosives? Um, uh, yeah, I, I, I think it does. Uh, I was mostly looking at um, like like um, uh, 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 health potions. You know that. that um, sorry, I, I really have a lot on my mind today. I, I'm normally not like this, uh, but yeah, yeah, there there's some uh, explosive stuff in here. I'll kind of point at Val. Do you see this person here? Yeah. 
Look at them, okay. memorize them, never let them near that book. Um, okay. Unless you want to be blown up in an explosion, that's not your fault. Okay. okay. Runs at this. Also, I'll then point to Pina. If you do give her the book, you will make him very angry. And the look I'm giving is just what Pina does is a side look. And he, as he takes his meat gun chowder powder or whatever the heck it's called and just takes a bite. As for me, one less smooth skin in the world. I'll do that lizard smile. <laughs> oh, um, okay then. He puts the book away. You may sit at our table. I'll, uh, thanks. I, uh, I didn't really feel like uh, sitting with my uh, team. Roll a intelligence check. I got a 13. Four. <laughs> also, did, sense, you, so. did you name the GIF or was that in the module? It's in the module. I did not name it. Okay, because Rybeck is the name of Steven Seagal's character. Oh, right? yeah. Navy SEAL, yep. <laughs> Casey Ryback. Ryback. Oh, God. I forgot about that. That's why I was like, really, bro? It wasn't me. I forgot <laughs> about those movies. Under I Siege, got, yeah. Yep. I got a uh, 17. Val's the only one, but this actually makes sense, because Val would not have been paying attention. This guy, you remember this, because his squad was right before yours. Yesterday on the obstacle course, he fell at every single obstacle, and to the point where he was unconscious. He did not complete the obstacle course, and his squad was uh, having a good laugh about it. In fact, you think he's one of the only people that you can remember that failed this course completely. You can see his squad. It was a three Cree, which is an insectoid, a plasmoid, which is a ooze person, and an elf. He was pretty embarrassed yesterday, so you guys know this guy. Tina's too disinterested in this character to pay him any heed. He's just going to sit and eat his gruel. Val asks if she can taste the food even if she can't eat it. <laughs> and Pina just stares at Val, gives her a glare. Please? And he just nudges the bowl like towards her a little bit. Thank you. And he only does this because Pina knows that she would be incessant about asking. <laughs> and he just decides to just surrender that battle. <laughs> I'm going to down the food and, you know, like, basically chug the chowder and run my tongue across my face and go disgusting. The human just is, like, wide-eyed while he uh, sees this. So, Val, with uh, Pina's food, what do you do? You said that so fast, I thought you said penis food. I'm not gonna <laughs> That's what I heard. <laughs> is there a spoon, I'm assuming? Yeah, there's a spoon. So I just pick up some of the food and just lick it and then put it back in the bowl. Tina just looks at her and is like, child. The human's just like very confused now. He just saw the lizard folk down the entire bowl. And then he sees a pink haired person with weird stitching on their face lick and then hand the food back. He can see that the food is still on Val's tongue. It's not being swallowed or anything. Mostly because Val probably hasn't forgotten to put the tongue back in the mouth. Because <laughs> Val doesn't know how to swallow. Nope. <laughs> so you've never seen a construct? A, a con? Oh, they're they're a construct. Okay. Uh. Oh yeah. There's a the person in charge of the uh, items. I saw him. The guy. Uh. What? It, you know where they they hit metal. Uh, oh, uh, uh, blacksmith. Sorry, sorry. Um, yeah, the, the blacksmith here, he's also uh, clockwork. You're the one who couldn't pass the physical test, right? E e yeah, um, you, you, uh, you remember that, huh? I think none of us will ever forget it, but have you eaten any food? No, I just, I'm very nervous. Um, oh, oh, yeah, you, you guys weren't here last, where were you guys last night? You weren't here for the announcement. What announcement? Over the course of the day, all squads are going to be called for a simulation uh, to test to see how we uh, handle things. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of, uh, well, everyone saw me uh, convulsing in the electric water yesterday, so uh, I'm a bit worried with how I'm going to handle this. From what I understand about you, the anatomy of you, warm blood, you need food to provide energy and build muscle, yes? Yeah. Maybe you should eat more? I just, I don't know why you guys are here, but I, I'm trying to, I'm getting married after I get out of here, and cool. I just want to actually provide a good life for her. And 
my alchemy studies wasn't really going very well. How do you propose to get married if you can't even survive a fight? Do you even know how to fight? Well, I mean, I can ca- I I'm actually pretty decent. I don't want to say I'm good at spell casting. So, I mean, I can throw a, f- a small little fireball. Do you know how to use any weapons? Well, I mean, it's <laughs> a knife's pretty easy. You just you take the pointy end and, you know, just put it in someone. At this point, Pina sighs loudly, stares at him, and tells him, just give it up. Just quit while you're ahead and go home. Hey, I just... Listen, I know I'm not going to be good at this. You're going to be dead at this. Frankly, I kind of feel like I I made a mistake signing up. But I really do want to try. I really want to do this. I want to have a good life. I mean, I'm not going to be joining the Spelljammer fleet, uh, but being, you know, like a navigator on a Spelljamming vessel for a company sounds like a pretty good life. And you'll be away from your woman for God knows how long and never know who she might be entertaining in your absence. As you say, he's like, uh, uh, what, what, what? He kind of looks completely like this never entertained his thoughts. Is this more of that mammalian sex stuff you guys all are always on about? Uh, Peanut just rolls his eyes and just says, damn fools, all of you. I'm not a fool. No, just ignorant. Well, yes, about human well, mammalian <laughs> sexual practices. I, uh, yes, I, I don't think that I want to know, but you seems to come up a lot. Peanut just stares at his food and wipes the spoon that Val licked on his pants leg to get the weird whatever she has in her mouth off of it, and then proceeds to eat in silence. <laughs> As for you, uh, maybe learn how to use a staff. Keep people at length. It's just a big stick. Simple enough. No stabbing. Oh, okay, yeah. I, I I, mean, I could do that, sure. Or maybe one of those, what did she call them, firearms. Oh, um, actually, yeah, I, I'm kind of interested in that. There's a whole section in here about gunpowder and how it works. It's very interesting. We don't have those on my uh, world. It's kind of weird saying that, isn't it? Like, all of us are from different places, and now we're on another world, though. I mean, it, I don't know if you're from this world or not, so sorry if you are. Guns go boom. Uh, yes, guns go boom. What's what you said that one's a construct? Like what what kind of co- looks human almost? Well, I'm sure most of them are human. I mean, I uh, don't see any parts that don't belong. It's probably just made to look like a human. It's a thing and sadly <laughs> one that I have to worry about on a constant basis. Another thing, I a person. Thank you very much. <sighs> Whatever. The guy looks at you, Val, and is like, what are you, um, what are you made out of? Because the only constructs I've seen so far are metal. Sunshine um, and lollipops. Other <laughs> humans, I think. Papa doesn't exactly tell us, but that's what I'm assuming. He just kind of holds up his hands and is like, um, can I, and he kind of touches his own face, like, can I see? Sure. Hold up here. What are your intentions toward our squad mate? I, I just want to know, like, is this skin? Like, are they... I've heard of something called a flesh golem. I want to know if that's what they are. I, I, I'm not going to do anything inappropriate. I'm married. Well, will be married soon. It's Sorry, I sometimes say that. And stop people before. I... Is this more of that mammalian intercourse thing? No, 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 no. I just... I'm just curious, because, I mean, it... Um, I'm sorry, what's your name again? Val. Okay, um, Val, I'm just curious. Does I, like, are you made from parts of other people, or are you just, you look like you're human? I just kind of want to, can I just touch your cheek a little bit? Sure, pretty sure I am made from parts of other people. He reaches over and very, like, hesitantly touches you, and all of a sudden he's like, wait, wait a minute. And he's touching your cheek, he's like, that's cloth. You're, are you a doll? I don't know. Like, he, he just like, it feels almost like skin, but it's cloth. And he looks closer. He's like, are your eyes glass? They're reflect. Oh, my- you have glass eyes. Hey, that's judgmental. I, no, 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 no. I, I don't mean any disrespect. It's like, they're a doll. Like an actual. I Do they have organs? Hold up and bring out Pyre, that dra- stuffed dragon I have. I say, this, this is a doll. Val is a person. Oh, I, I, I don't mean any talk, disrespect. I make him talk. I am Pyre. I am going to be a crazy person. 
Al <laughs> doesn't have the stomach. So no, I don't think I have these organ things that you speak of. I can't eat. Wow. Uh, uh, well, I, I am, I'm really not meaning any disrespect. It's just what I know about constructs is most of them are, are not made of cloth. I mean, wow. I, he's just like staring now at you, Val. Not like trying to be inappropriate or anything. He's just like, how are you made? Are all you capable of doing is asking random questions of things? He just kind of looks at you. He's like, I, I'm, I'm really sorry. I'm just, I'm just scared for today's uh, assessment simulation. There, there's word that they're actually going to be making us compete against each other. And what does that matter? You've already resigned yourself to mediocrity by saying you don't want to be an actual active member. You want to be a navigator or something. So why does that matter? Well, I mean, you, you, it's going to be testing all of our skills. And I mean, this is the none. first time he just kind of just stares at you like, what? And he gets, I he think stops what, talking at that point and he just looks My kind teammate of is trying to say is, there's no reason to be scared because it's not real and you're not actually going to die. But unless you defend yourself, bad things will probably happen. A roll a persuasion, Agamus. 15. And add a zero to that makes it a 15. He takes a deep breath. He's like, you're right. It's, it's just, it's a simulation. And it's, it's, it's not even for our grade. They're just assessing us. They just want to see how we handle ourselves in a different situation. I, Leave it to the lizard to be the most human. You take that back. <laughs> <laughs> what's your name, friend? Oh, uh, Mikan. Uh, what's your name? Agamish. Agamish Amber Eyes of the Shopscale Clan. He holds out his hand. He's like, Mike and Haverstance. Mike and look, all you need to do is, if you're confronted, is bow your teeth in a, a, a growl, which you monkeys seem capable of. Uh, use your big stick, the, the, the staff, beat them over the head, and cast your little fireball if they get you know, uppity with their missile weapons, and hide if you have to. And pray so you don't trip again. again. He's just like, you know, you're, you're right. I mean, not only is this a simulation, but I mean, I, I can cast spells. Like, I, I'm actually pretty decent at it. So, I mean, yeah, I, I'm not really good at throwing a punch, but, you know. And then he just lifts his hand and you see it start to glow and a little fire appears. And he's like, I can throw one of these pretty good. You can throw your hand? You no, it's... Throw an it's, ember? And now he just looks at you, Pina, and his whole hand just erupts into fire. And it's not just a little ember. He's like, it's more than that. And all of a sudden you just hear, hey, hey, no magic casting in here, especially combat spells, to which he quickly puts it out. He's like, sorry, sorry. Yeah, I, I, I can handle myself. I can do this. There, now go something. Just stares at him and then shakes his head. And he just looks at you, Agamus. He's like, yeah, thanks. I, I, I needed that. I needed to focus. My, uh, my pleasure, I suppose. Uh, I mean, I, I've been told by the Commandant of the Academy that I get to eat anybody who dies, and I don't think I want to. I'll do the thank lizard you. smile again. He's like, um, thank you? That, that was an attempt at humor. He's like, um, I'm kind of figuring that. He goes, you know, I'm going to go get some food, and, uh, you know, I think I'm going to sit with my squad. I, I, I kind of embarrassed myself yesterday. I want to kind of, you know, show them what I can be. Well, if, if I see you on the field of battle, I'm not going to spare you. Right. Okay. He's just like, um, nice talking to you. And looks, thank you, Agamus, um, whoever he is. Um, nice talking to you too. And he looks over at Val and goes, and it was very nice meeting you, Val. Um, very, very interesting. Nice to meet you too. So you guys go throughout the day, have a couple training courses just on different facts, but then your squad gets called. But it's not just your squad. You hear squads five and six report to simulation deck. And you know that's that's Mikan's squad. Mikan was squad five. So you report in and Mikan is standing with his squad and you see three individuals standing next to the deck. You recognize Boson, Tarto, and Abizin, the very, very weird human being. They were talking to you about spell jamming helms the other day. And you now see a new person you've never seen before, and it is an auto gnome. He is a clockwork gnome. Of course, Val, you know this person. You spent some time with him last night. He is the person in charge of all the weapons and the blacksmith forge. And what the hell is his name? I just lost it. I literally saw it two seconds ago, and now I can't find it. 
Mr. Blip. So Val, you've spent some time with this guy. He's basically your babysitter at night, but the rest of you have never seen him before. He tells Tardo that the simulation decks are ready to go. So Tardo turns to all of you. Today, we're going to assess your capabilities, not just how we did yesterday. You will, of course, not be confused like you were yesterday. Shadow Magic can do that the first timers. You have a mission. You must complete the mission. But let me explain, this is not a competition. Your two simulations will run at the same time, and you actually might run into each other. We are not purposely putting you against one another. This is not a race. This is not, let's attack one another and fight. But you all have the same mission. The mission is to acquire a book. Each of you will navigate your ship through a debris field on the outskirts of the world of Kolyar. There you will find a ship that requires salvage. Find the logbook and return with it with your ship intact. If your ship is damaged in any way, you will lose some points. How you move through this will gain you points or lose you points. It doesn't matter who's the fastest, it just matters who completes the mission. Now before we begin the simulation, two of you must be chosen from your squads. One to be the spell jamming navigator, and the other to be the captain. The others will just be crewmen. So, before the simulation begins, talk amongst your team and decide who will be which. So, right now, metagame-wise, only two of you can be navigators. Agamus and Val, as both of you are spell jammer capable. Okay, <laughs> sorry, I'm just looking at uh, who should be the captain. Yeah, this this group uh, kind well, of falls short on a few areas. Agamus will make the argument that it should be Pina, because he has military experience. So who should be the spell jamming navigator? I'm, I'm, I'm not... Not Val. Val, I think <laughs> Val. <laughs> All right, I'll do it. If you're going to put me in a position I don't want, I'm going to do the same to you. <laughs> <laughs> You are taken in to the chamber with Mr. Blip. And you see, it's interesting. His eye color shifts between. And he's like, once the simulation begins, everything will feel real. If you die, you will just be rendered unconscious. And we can get things going. As Mr. Blip leaves the room, you see the very strange individual, Abazin. They snap their fingers and the illusion takes over. And all of you are now on the deck of a hammerhead ship. Standing on the bridge, there is a desk on the forecastle and you see the spell jamming helm. Normally you need a little bit of time to attune to this, but whoever is going to attune sits into the seat and will automatically become attuned to it. All right, I'll go sit there. There is a map showing the course, so you guys have to do some course plotting. Who would like to figure out the course? Well, I guess that would, well, I mean, between the navigator and the captain. Yeah, I was going to say, probably the both of us. Yeah, is that okay. possible? Yes, it is. It is okay. very possible. Val, would you like to jump in on this as well? Sure. Takes the map, runs around, it lights on fire. <laughs> Spelljammer. Agamus, I need you to either make an investigation skill check or a survival skill check. Oh, I'll do survival. <laughs> uh, 21. Captain Pina, I need you to make a survival or a persuasion check. Basically, you guys are all looking at this map, figuring it out. All right. It has to be survival. 16. Hey, wow, you guys are doing pretty good. Hold on one second. I'm just like, wait, what does this say? Okay, I don't understand how this is about to work. Oh, great. Shipmate, Val. Oh, no. Make an athletics or acrobatics check. She's got to rig the sails. Oh, yeah. Now mm -hmm. I understand that. It doesn't explain that in this. It explains the other two, but doesn't explain the shipmates. 18. My God. Okay, well, <laughs> Val has acrobatics. So actually, I'm going to say it. You guys actually chose pretty well. For the checks. Val, do you have investigation for a skill? Yes, I do. Okay, actually, yeah. All of you are pretty suited for this. Very cool. You guys have done some pretty good points so far. Okay. You have successfully moved the ship into outer space. It's a pretty cool experience for you guys. This is the first time this has happened. 
you guys have actually lifted a ship that looks like a hammerhead shark through sheer will of Agamus into the sky and are now in outer space. You feel as the gravity planes are shifting as you're being pulled away. And you feel as the gravity pulls you towards the ship instead of the planet. And you move out into the stars. So as you're moving away from the planet, you see something dead ahead. I need everyone to make a perception check. Oh, that's my best one yet. Uh, 11. I see nothing. <laughs> Val is having fun with the rigging. Probably hanging upside down at this point. Why do they have to make the 9 and the 6 look so damn close? They can't. <laughs> right. Okay, so it's a 9. And there's no bonus, so just 9. Agamus, you're the one who notices this. Once you guys get far enough away from the planet, you start to speed up, and it's just kind of gone now. But dead ahead, you're seeing kind of what looks like a cloud. But to you, you notice it. It's not a cloud. It's things. They are moving. And you realize it is a cloud of what would appear to be electric eels. And they're actually forming a storm cloud. And you guys are about to go directly into it, and it's coming quickly. So now everyone needs to make a different check to handle how this is going to happen. Captain, you have yet again survival or persuasion. Val, you have athletics or acrobatics. And of course, Spelljammer, you have Arcana or survival. Quickly think on your feet here, people. What's going to happen? 19 with survival. You said, what were my two? Perception? Uh, no, persuasion or survival. Okay, so I have a 20. Okay, so Agamus and Pina, both of your uh, survivals, you quickly realize that there's actually a gap in one of the sides. So you can quickly uh, move the ship in. While Val, you do quickly adjust the rigging. You miss the lightning storm completely. I was say, this is Pina was a soldier, not a sailor, so I had to look up like, all right, what, what, do I say hard to port? What? <laughs> <laughs> to the left! To the <laughs> left! But what? You haven't been trained in this yet. Don't worry. At the end of this actual uh, introduction, you all get some uh, proficiencies. So you guys, it's moving quickly. Part of you is probably wondering, is this part of the simulation or is this actually how it is once you get out to outer space and moving? Because you guys don't know what's exactly being simulated. I'll tell you this now, metagame-wise, this trip would take days. But for this, this is only taking a few minutes. When all of a sudden you see the asteroid cluster around the planet. And you know this is where you're looking for the ship. So now it is all about finding the best way through. So now, Captain, I need a survival or persuasion. Val, I need acrobatics or athletics. And finally, Spelljammer, Arcana, or Perception. Got a nine. Fifteen. Eighteen. Sorry, Pina, you really did not do well this time. Yeah. To be perfectly honest, you're not even sure if Pina's really looking. Pina's probably, like, starting to feel a little sick because of all the movement and all the speed. But, Space sorry, Pina. stupid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pina's like, oh, God. What am I doing here? Asteroids are stupid. Yeah. I'm on a boat in outer space with a lizard and whatever the hell Val is. And Val might blow us up at any given point. And the lizard might eat me at any given point. It's like, don't let her near the magazine. <laughs> if this blasted thing has one. You have made it in to the asteroid field. And now I need everyone to make a perception check. <gasps> <laughs> I rolled 16. a seven. I just keep going up, you know, incrementally. Eleven. Uh, yeah. sixteen. Pina, you have officially kind of knocked yourself out of whatever the hell went on when you accidentally caused the ship to get damaged slightly from an asteroid because you weren't paying attention. No. Yeah. You see the ship. You find what appears to be a flying fish ship. Now this literally looks like a giant fish, and it is torn apart. So I need everyone to make another perception check. Oh, I don't like this. <laughs> <laughs> I just rolled an eight. So now I rolled a five, a six, a seven, and an eight. <laughs> ten. I got a ten as well. Okay, so here's the problem. Oh, God. It's just a floating ship. You don't see anything. So for all you know, 
the book is floating around, but uh, sadly you can't see it. And unfortunately, now you've realized something else. You're going to have to leave the ship to find the book. So you guys know that the, from a brief little explanation, there is a field of air around you. The ship is outside that field of air. So whoever goes out there is not going to be able to breathe. And then you have to find a way to get them back in. And whoever you send is going to be the one to have to find the book. So what is your guys' plan? Well, I can hold my breath for a very long time, 15 minutes. But uh, Val, you don't need to breathe, do you? I would say send the two across with a rope so that if if Agamith runs out of breath, so if it exceeds the 15 minutes, he tugs on the rope twice or whatever, and I, so I have to be on the boat because I am a mere human, I can pull him across to safety. And Val being Val doesn't have to do anything like that. Okay, so you're tying ropes onto every, on the two people being thrown out? Yes, and I'm, I stay on the boat for safety purposes Okay, who is tying the rope? Whoever's going to tie the rope. It can be two people, it can be all of you. Whoever ties the rope has to make a either sleight of hand check or a dex check. I will do the rope. Okay. I'll try so to get the, the boat, our, our boat, as close to that boat as possible. Okay, since you said that, give me either survival or arcana. Uh, 23. So 18 with five sleight of hand, so 23. Okay, so that's one of the, you've just tied a very good knot on one of them. So if you're going to do both of them, tie it, do another check. Yeah, the really good one's on Val because I'm afraid she's going to squirm away. <laughs> She'll get distracted by something shiny on the boat. Oh, I'm sorry, Agamemnon. <laughs> uh, so that's a seven. <laughs> you think it's pretty good, Agamemnon and Val. It's time to jump off the boat. If you guys have any abilities or spells that could help, go ahead and use those. If not, we're going to be making some checks, either in acrobatics or athletics. I do not, other than I can hold my breath for 15. Okay, so go ahead and give me an athletics or acrobatics check, Agamus. Val, can you do anything to assist this, or are you just going to do a roll? Um, for spells? 24. Yeah. I, only, I didn't take anything that would help with this, I don't think. So go ahead and roll in acrobatics or athletics. Uh, what did you get, Agamus? 24. Oh, that's a really good job. Acrobatics, yeah, I rolled an 18. Now watch when I, it goes to do my breath. Oh, two. <laughs> 14. Not your best, but both of you pretty much launch yourselves out of the boat pretty easily. So that's pretty good. And the second you get outside of this bubble around the ship, you feel it. You have broken through the gravity, and you also feel the air is now completely sucked away. You are now in deep space, floating there, inside the wreckage. So I need both of you to give me a perception check. Fourteen. Seven. So, Agamus, you look over, and Val is just spinning in place, <laughs> having the time of their life. I'll go over and stop them and unspool <laughs> them from the rope. Yep. But as you're doing that, you notice there's a book floating rather close by. Not enough that you can go out and grab it, but you can propel yourself by pushing yourself off of debris to get it. After I've unspooled them, I'll, I'll do it. Okay, give me another acrobatics check then. Uh, 19. Okay, you get to it pretty easily. And you can grab the book. You have I'll the start. logbook. It is the logbook? Yep. I'll like wave at Pina. Uh, Pina, do a perception check. I say you're supposed to tug it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'm tugging the rope. Well, too late. <laughs> Pina's apparently blind because he rolls a daggone eight. Give me a uh, con check, Agamus. There's that four. <laughs> For a total you're, of seven. You're not having fun all of a sudden. Give me an intelligence check. A four. That's with the <laughs> intelligence bonus. Hey, Val, give me an intelligence check. Is this them remembering that they're supposed to tug it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just thinking. Team Amer oh, okay. I I'd like to point out that uh, Val actually does have a much higher intelligence than all of you. Just poor impulse yeah. control. Very <laughs> much so. Val's yeah. just like Val just likes to have fun. Yeah. So Val, you have seen that Agamus has the logbook like you're supposed to find. And Agamus looks like they're having some trouble for some reason. You don't understand why. You're fine. You don't know what the hell the big deal is. But you now know you're supposed to tug the rope to signal to Pina to bring you in. 
So what are you going to do? Do what I'm supposed to do. Tug the rope? Yeah. Okay, Pina, you feel the ropes get tugged. I feel the ropes get tugged and I start pulling uh-huh. them in. All right, give me athletics. Athletics, okay. Agamus, uh, give me a uh, con check again. So that I have a 10 on athletics. <laughs> okay. I rolled a three, so that's a, a six. Things are going to go in black for you. <laughs> you get pulled directly into the gravity well. So before you get the air, but before that, I need, um, what should it be? Let's go. Let's do a dex check. I was almost said reflex save. I'm like, nope, that's that's an older edition. Yep. So Val and Agamus, give me a dex save. Well, I rolled a 19 for that. So apparently I just failed con saves and perception check. <laughs> 20. Okay, both of you, as you're pulled in, you all of a sudden swing down, but you can quickly land your feet on the side of the hall. And now it's just getting up there. So give me uh, athletics or acrobatics. Uh, 13, 19. Okay, you climb up pretty easily. Tell me Val trips over. 22. (laughs) (laughs) Val not only just kind of runs up the side of the ship, but then kind of does a flip over the edge. (laughs) (laughs) All right, and you got the boat. I mean, you got the uh, log uh, book on back on the boat. I'm just kind of stuck thinking about what (sighs) Agonis looks like right (sighs) now. (laughs) (sighs) Like, hands on knees, bent over. <sighs> the share never tasted so good. <laughs> Even with your monkey stink all over the boat. <sighs> mm. And Val, uh, you're just like, I still don't get it. What's wrong? Yeah. I was like, what are you doing? What's that noise? You know, uh, just stares at them. like Breathing? Uh, such drama. That's what that is? I ran out of air. I could only hold my breath for so long. Oh, I didn't know that's what people did. Yeah. All right. So oh. assuming your original positions, I need a survival or persuasion from Pina, athletics or an acrobatics from Val, mm. and of course, intellig- arcana or perception from <laughs> Agamus. I have a bad feeling there's not going to be many points this time. <laughs> no. Uh, 21. 16. 5. That's not a point. <laughs> <laughs> So, Pina, I don't think you're you're cut out to be a captain. I wasn't a captain in the guard. I was a sergeant. We were at the <laughs> gates, not at a bloody boat. All right. So you guys have made it out after get it, scrapping, sc- scraping the paint again. Oh, boy. But so you're away from the asteroid field. I need another perception check. <laughs> oh, thank you, Lord. 16. 17. 8. Agamus is just kind of uh, sitting in the chair, guiding the ship like, oh my god, (laughs) my lungs hurt so bad. (laughs) I'm not going to lie, your vision was going black with that. That's how long you were without. All right, but Val and Pina, you notice something. There is a ship, and it's coming close. Mm. It is a, what kind of ship is it, actually? They don't even specify what kind of ship it is. It's a flying fish ship. So you have a ship that looks like a fish and it's coming towards you damn mackerels what are you gonna do i would say ready your positions just as an in case so navigator be on point val just don't touch anything val just (laughs) just be ready as you guys get closer you do notice it has a pirate flag on it it is not the other team and it is coming you can flee you can try to attack them you do have some weapons on board not much, though. Can we see how many are on board? Do perception. I just want to see if we're outnumbered. Ten. Yeah, you're outnumbered. Not okay. by much, but you got. they do have some numbers on you. Well, what's the call, Captain? I'm, well, as a rogue, I'm going to think stealth. So we must prepare to be boarded and prepare for prepare an ambush on the enemy. So You can try to run away. You do have, looking at the ships, yeah, you are faster than them. Okay, let's do a, a hard to port, try and maneuver out, but be prepared for a boarding. Okay, I need the spell jammer to make Arcana or Survival. Okay, Survival, I rolled a 12, so uh, 19. Okay, yeah, that's actually pretty good. So you are actually getting away from them. And- Do I release plasma from the warp nacelles and ignite it when they hit the- <laughs> <laughs> Damn Trekkie. <laughs> Represent. Farscape only. 
I was going to say, if there was a way, because Val's an artificer, but I don't think she can create a mine fast enough. Or no. Can't she make mine? Okay. I think Val has some long-range capabilities in magic. I can't fully remember. But anyway, you actually do escape the vessel, and you guys are you're getting back to where you saw the flying fish eels. Oh, fantastic. When all of a sudden you see something, it's another hammerhead, and something's happened. Like, it is taking massive damage from the eels, and you can see someone on the bow of the ship waving their arms. Uh, give me perceptions. I'm on a spaceship. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so am I. Eight. Eight. Ten. Seventeen. Oh. Okay, Val, you see it. It's Mikan. So That's the other Mikan. squad. And it looks like something's happening. They're trying to get your attention. So what are you going to do? You're going to tell everyone, hey, that's Mike in, or just ignore this and like, oh, let's just keep going. No, I'm going to, I'm going to tell them like, hey, other team, um, dude getting married, waving, think they need help. And Pina will grumble under his breath, damn fool, I told him to leave. He's a damn fool, but we have to do what's right. So we're going in. I'll drink course, I, sir. All right, give me a survival or arcana. 20, dirty 20, not that. Okay. So you guys get there, and as you're pulling up, Micah just screams, something's going on, the ship just stopped moving. And quickly, they're trying to get on board of your boat. I will will help, or I will at least help. Uh huh. But I'm going to do it with a grumpy face like these damn children. Okay, so. as you're getting them on the boat, okay. I need everyone to make a deck save. 21. 13. 17. Okay. Oh boy. A massive lightning bolt shoots out, and all of you take eight points of lightning damage when all of a sudden you hear, That's not part of the simulation! End it! End it! Quickly, the illusion goes away, but the lightning doesn't. It's still going. Squad is no longer in the chamber with you. They're in their chamber now. But the lightning's not stopping. And then all of a sudden, it just finally ends. And you see Abazin standing there. They are doing some kind of motions with their hands. They're performing a dispel magic. And it just stops. And it's like, is everyone okay? What the hell was that? You tell us. We're out there performing your training exercise. And we almost get killed by a lightning bolt in your simulation. That wasn't part of the simulation. That wasn't even... Stay here. I gotta go check on Boson. But I got your book. It's well, the book's gone now. Oh. Yeah, it was part of the illusion. So you guys are in the chamber, and something's going on. Like, they are panicking. So you guys can go to the other chamber if you want. Examine this chamber, or just walk out. I don't... I look at my team members to see what their faces say. Mine says lizard. <laughs> <laughs> we can examine it. You can either make some investigation checks, or if anyone has special magical capabilities, you can cast that spell. I'll do an investigation. Uh, I got a 14. I can try an investigation. Did you say they already tried to do detect magic? No, I just said if someone has detect oh, magic. I have detect magic. Would you like to do that? Yeah. All right, so Agamus got a 14, or was that okay? Pina, what did you get? I got a three. <laughs> All right. Pina's just pissed. Yeah. Agamus, you're not finding anything, but Val, as you're scanning the room with your detect magic on, there's something embedded in the wall. Well, you're detecting the entire room is strong with illusion magic, but what is embedded in the wall does not match the same magical aurora that the room has. Um, I'll let everybody know. I'll just be like, there's something in the wall. It's not ours. Well, what is it? I don't know. So heading over, you can see something is jammed pretty well into the wall. Like so far jammed in that unless you're right on top of it, you're not going to notice it. You can pr try to pry it loose if you want. Yeah, I was just, I'll take one of my daggers and try to pry it out. All right, give me uh, athletics. 16. Okay, you pop it out. It's this very strange golden disc. And Val, I can tell you the magic coming off of this is it's magic for summoning or elemental magic or s creating elemental magic, I should say. So this thing is not part of an illusion. This thing is supposed to do something and it's mostly for causing damage. So with this now in new information, what do you guys want to do? 
we go tell one of the people. Let's see. Uh, mm-hmm. Run we'll wait the for place the, or... right the bosun or whoever to show back up. I would concur. We wait for them to return and then we present them with what uh, my team found. So bosun uh, Tardo comes in. Is everyone okay in here? And you can tell bosun got hit with something. Her clothes are singed and looks a bit hurt. Well, we found this in the wall, and I'll hold out the disc. She examines it, and she's like, come with me, and runs back into the other room. And you can see the squad is in there. The elf female, she got pretty badly hurt. The others didn't really get much, but you can tell they're hurt too. And she shows it to Abazin, and she tells them to scan the wall with magic. And he does so, and quickly he moves straight towards something. And you can tell there's something else embedded into the wall. She goes up and she pries it out, and it's an identical disc. She just looks and is like, what the hell is this thing? And Abazin just looks very confused. They're just like, this isn't supposed to be in here. This is not part of the chamber. Tartar just looks at all of you and like, go ahead and um, call it a day. No, uh, no more training or orientations today. Just uh, go relax. And quickly you hear her go, I'm going to go talk to Mert. He needs to know about this. And looks over at squad five and just goes, get her to the infirmary. So after a few hours, eventually squad five shows back up. The elf is not with them. Mikan comes up to you guys and goes, Lethel is okay. She got pretty badly hurt by that lightning bolt, but she's going to pull through. And just kind of looks around it's like, what the hell happened in there? Like. Our our ship just stopped completely. Like it wasn't moving or anything. And then that freaking lightning bolts just start hitting us all over. Did you guys have any problems? Not until we try to save your worthless behind. Mike and just looks at you. He's like, hey, we didn't do anything. Just all of a sudden it went nuts in there. Well, we did get chased by pirates. Well, I'm I'm gonna kind of assume that was normal, but the lightning, uh, that definitely wasn't normal. Is it so? Do you normally get chased by pirates? I don't well, get chased by pirates. It's not normal to me. Well, I mean, we're supposed to be getting trained for this type of situation, so... Well, you asked if anything happened to us, and I told you we got chased by pirates. But then you had to make it all about you. <laughs> <laughs> After At that point, Tardo comes in. And explains to everyone that uh, something has gone awry. And she looks at you as like, I would prefer if no one mentions anything to other squads. We are, uh, Mert wants to figure out what's going on. But I can tell you that, frankly, only one squad actually passed the test. But we're going to ignore the failure because it wasn't their fault. The illusion shut down. But that being said, squad six, congratulations. You scored a grand total of 18 points. Looks over at you, Pina, and is like, perhaps you should focus a little bit better when leading a team. But don't worry, it was your first command. So maybe you have a knack for it, maybe you don't. Doesn't matter right now. But Pina just glares at them. Looks at you, is like, do not glare at me, cadet. Glares harder. <laughs> <laughs> As a reward for scoring so high on the exam, all of you receive 100 gold. Tardo looks at Agamus and Val and goes, by the way, good job trying to help the other squad. Sometimes you gotta help regardless of how you feel about the people. And with that, your second day, <laughs> I'm not I gonna saw that. Thing. I'm just gonna be like, mm, wasn't that the captain's <laughs> idea? Well, fact, I, I, Agamus is gonna speak up and say, well... <laughs> We were just following the captain's orders. Uh huh. Pina's not a. Uh, yeah, Pina. It, Tardo <laughs> looks at you, pulls out a thing, goes, "Worthless purse." Do I need to go over everything you said? No. I understand you don't like him, but you know you still had to help. Didn't know kindness of words was graded, but okay. Yeah, really? yeah I was going to. Well, yeah. Kindness of words is not graded, but <laughs> it really doesn't look good for potential assignments if you have problems with potential teammates or even potential allies. How many people are on team five? Just four? At the moment, four. Oh, okay. The uh, teammate, the, the teams are at the very least three to six members. But 
That ends your official second day, and you're all level three now.